uh, really going into week number two, four weeks prior to opening game. And uh, coming out of last week, um, really felt good at where we're at right now and the situations that we've gone through and the installation that we've got in. Great in the tape the other day. Uh, defensively, two kids really stood out. Stood out. I thought Chino Wosu and Connor Murphy really stood out at, at the defensive front position. And then offensively, offensively going back and watching the big kids, how they're functioning, both the ones and the twos. Impressive for their first time out as far as communication, lack of, uh, not a lot, uh, a lot of mental bust, and really a physicality that they brought to the game, run game wise. Uh, we commended them in our team meeting. Today came out had a light practice. This will be a typical Monday for us where we get about 50 minutes to an hour's worth of work, plus get the opportunity to work with our young kids afterwards, and uh, then work to our two-minute situation prior to half. A two-minute game has been so valuable for us over the last year. It's a situational mastery that you have to have in your toolbox, and uh, I thought the kids uh, functioned very well with it today. So with that, I'll answer any questions that you have. You heard a timetable for Daniel Madrebebe? Yeah, you know, I'm really hoping by the mock game week is, is what we're shooting for. It could be earlier, uh, but that's what he and I have talked about, um, where he's at right now. He's starting to get, as you can see over in Muscle Beach, starting to do that with no pain, which is a good sign. Um, we'll get him running and changing direction. Just don't want to go back full speed with an injury that's kind of big nagging. Uh, we want him healthy. So if we can get him back by mock game week about two weeks out, that would be ideal. Uh, if we can get him a little bit sooner, it would be perfect. Coach, a little follow-up to the tight end question from Adam. A lot of talent, but a lot of guys banged up as well. Mm -hmm. Your overall assessment of talent versus banged up. Yeah, no question. Well, it's given a couple of the younger kids, like Aaron Croman, hope valuable reps, uh, which are needed. Carrie Angeline, you know, coming off a redshirt year. That's the good news. The bad news is the, the vets, uh, we got to get back out here. And that's Daniel and Tyler, you know, coming off a of concussion protocol. Daniel with a little bit of a hip flexor. And uh, the good news we got with uh, the day Josh uh, on film, it was an ugly hit. And to come out of there structurally really good. Uh, we're, we're thankful for that. So um, I'm hoping to have them all back by mock game week. That's that's the goal, and it looks like we're on pace for that, and that'll give us two weeks prior to game day. What have you thought of Chris Brown at left guard? Uh, doing a nice job, doing a nice job, and, and I tell you, Roy's pushing them really well too. So both those two kids, I, I think we've got tremendous depth right there at that left guard position. Would not have an issue with any any of those two kids playing uh, in a ball game right now. I think they're ready to go. Um, Chris is doing a nice job. I'm always hard on him. Uh, I, you know, any any guy that's been playing for two years, I I put him up here and, and expect a lot of them. So I know Neil is pushing him really hard uh, to be a perfectionist and he's got Roy right behind him pushing him. So I think that's a good situation at that position. What about Clayton at left? Um, you know, Clayton's doing a nice job at left. You know, first time to get really valuable reps. Um, you know, sharing with Toa, and we'll see who's the best for us uh, in the moment right there. But uh, for a kid from where he was last year to now, has really invested a lot in himself, has put good weight on, really gotten in his playbook. And you see his athleticism for the position. Um, he's a natural at it. So it's good to see his progression over the last year. What's he learned? He, he's right, I think he's right under 300 right now. I think he started right at about the 300 pound right at the prior to camp, but I think he's lost a couple pounds uh, once we got started. Can one of the one of the freshmen make a legitimate push to get into that five? Is, that, I, is there enough time? You know, with those freshmen, a lot of times you, you look at maybe not the first game, but you really hope by the Cal game, you know, they're making a, a by that fourth game, hoping they're making a great contribution for you. You know, I've talked about the two that have stood out to me thus far has been Austin Jackson and Andrew Voorhees. Um, Andrew's had, you know, an extra camp. Um, and uh, they've done not only valuable reps, but very impressive reps for their age. Uh, those two are kind of ahead of the game right now, in my mind. It seems Matt Pink's gotten a few of the second team offensive reps mm -hmm. after Sam. What's your assessment of how he's doing versus Jack Sears and uh, yeah. Yeah, you can, competition? You can tell Matt is comfortable. You know, this is, gosh, I'll give this is his one, two, three, four fourth camp you know and you're starting to see signs of you know one being more comfortable the ball's coming out quicker he's making decisive decisions on time uh, and the accuracy has improved a bunch so um, I like where his progression has gone um, you know Jack is competing with him each and every day we'll see where we're at you know after 18 practices and decide where we go but um, I'm proud of Matt um, he's come a long way uh, going into his second training camp how does the ball training camp? Oh, sorry. 
how does the fact that you know Jack still has a retro year and, and mm -hmm. obviously Matt's used his yeah. impact that yeah. decision to be who's going to be the back end? Yeah, I mean, I'd be fibbing to you if it doesn't enter your mind. You know, it, anytime that you have a, a kid with a retro year, you have to make that decision. Uh, I think you, it, in the moment and who can help your team the most, you, you've got to decide on. Uh, but, you know, Jack doesn't have to be the starter right now. You know, Sam Darnold is the starter. So he's really competing with Matt for that two that two position right now. And we'll see where he is after after another week and a half and, and make a decision. But it's good to have that red shirt year in the bank if we need it. How big a difference does it when you're evaluating quarterbacks who's been on campus for a year versus first time? Yeah, is, is, is that your big deal? Yeah, it, it's a huge deal because you're talking about a pro style system. I mean, you're walking up there, having to declare a mic, having to see safety rotation, maybe having to re mic, maybe having to make a decision from one play to another based on front, based on coverage, and you got 40 seconds to get all that done. Uh, you have to have five progression reads, you, you full field reads. Um, you have to make sure that uh, everybody's lined up right, all the motions are right. So that's a that's a lot on a young quarterback, especially in a pro style system. And sometimes it takes time uh, to be able to do that. But I commend Jack. You know, he's he's further along in the process than I thought he would be, um, and, and really has picked things up nice. Is there a point in, in, in fall camp where we might see the Austin Jackson and, and where he's going against some of the first? Oh yeah, no question, no question. We'll we'll push him up there and see what see what they're made of. You know, and the one on one pass rush has been really fun because it, a lot of times it's not ones on one. Sometimes it's two on ones, and to see him those two guys go up against a Porter or a Chinna and to see them be able to function and compete has been been very nice to see as a head coach. They are truly two talented individuals that have a bright, bright future. When you uh, vote in the coaches pay, how long does it take you to kind of go through a list of teams and figure out well, it's easier in the off season because you get to study. You know, usually, usually in season you have to do it fairly quickly. You know, you're a lot of times it's coming back on a plane on a on a way trip and and trying to find out the scores and, and make decisions. And but you, you know, we have to have that thing in by Monday. So you got to take the time Sunday to study what has happened, where they are in the past. Off season's a lot easier. In season, it's it's a hurried process. What, off season, what do you go? To, what's your go to? guide for these other teams <laughs> what, what informs you usually google <laughs> yeah, usually i usually look up teams i like to read you know and i like reading up on other teams and and seeing what they are seeing what they're doing see if there's one or two things that you know we can pirate that can make us a better team but you're also learning about teams and learning about their depth um, who lost who who's got who back and and um you, you know just a lot of these teams we study in the off season, you know, offensively and defensively. So that helps too. It's just so much an easier process now compared to the season. Does it change your perception of any teams once you go through that, but before you even fill out the ballot, like you start looking at them and thinking, this team might be better than I thought they're going to be? And oh, yeah. You know, nobody's perfect. You know, the only thing that ends up mattering is that committee making their selections in the playoff. You know, that that's the final judgment. We all try to do our best and and, uh, and and put the people in the right spot. But, yeah, I've messed up plenty over the last year. Who knows? I'm talking more about your own, like, when you're, you're going to fill out your first ballot, mm -hmm. maybe you learn things before you even fill it out that you didn't know a week before. Yeah, you know, they've already won in our first ballot and, and have already, you know, a lot of times things change during camp because of the injuries. So, you know, they ask us to fill it out pretty early. We've done that. Uh, but you always have those injuries that could be devastating. I mean, uh, you think about a Miami Dolphin team right now, even though they're in the pros, and you look at losing a quarterback, that can change the dynamic of an entire team. So uh, a lot of things can change over these next four weeks of training camp. Do you want more to vote USC where you think USC is going to be? Or I'll, I'll leave that private. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.